extra functions of the spiral line to help maintain the body's balance through all planes of movement. It is also key in determining pelvic angle and proper knee tracking. The spiral line often has imbalances because of limb dominance as well as um, movement patterns such as twisting and maintaining held positions. Starting with our structural locations, we'll start with the occipital ridge at the base of the skull. We'll come down to the splenius capitis and cervicus at the base of the neck to the lower cervical area and the upper thoracic area. Go, coming down and traveling to the medial border of the scapula, coming underneath the, the scapula to the serratus anterior towards the, on, the, on the lateral ribs, coming down to the external obliques and then we'll cross down into the internal oblique and the iliac crest or the ASIS coming down the tensor fascia, the tensor fascia latte on the IT band down to the knee where we'll cross the, uh, and we'll cross the knee and they'll connect with the lateral tibial condyle and the ischial tuberosity coming down the pronius longus going down and underneath the foot to the base of the first metatarsal coming back up the tibialis anterior back to the lateral tibial condyle coming up from the bicep femoris we'll come to the sacral tuberous and ligament and the sacral fascia coming up to the sacrum and the sacral lumbar fascia and the rectus spinae traveling up the rectus spinae we'll pat the fascia connects to the spinous processes of the spine and then we'll come up and it uh, intertwines with the rhomboid major and minor coming back up to the skull. Here I will demonstrate one stretch of the spiral line by doing a modified triangle pose. First, I'm gonna keep my back leg straight. I'm gonna lunge out off of my front leg. I'm gonna lean down, trying to keep my back straight as well too. Reach underneath with my left hand. I'm gonna look up at the ceiling and I'm gonna clasp my hands behind my back as I stretch out the line. I'm gonna hold this for about 10 seconds. Least. Today we'll be stretching our uh, spiral fascia line. We'll be doing a Spider-Man flow exercise and I will show you how it is. We'll be starting with lunging out with our right foot, reaching down with our hands, tilting the right leg out to get a little bit of a hip stretch and then we're going to be reaching up towards the sky, looking to the sky, trying to keep my back as straight as possible. Next we'll be walking forward on our hands Stepping forward, reaching to the other side with the left hand, change it, sit down on our left leg onto our butt, do 90 degree hip rotations, keeping the feet plantar flexed to stretch the fascia lines. Then if we want to add another component to make it more difficult, you spin up straight into Spider-Man again. All right, so the final stretch we'll do for our spiral line, we're gonna use a resistance band. So I'm gonna uh, start my legs out straight in front of me. I'm gonna wrap it around one foot. I'm gonna lay, lay back as I bring my leg up, trying to keep my legs straight. Take my left hand, bring it up close to the foot, and I'm going to bring my right leg down to the left as I turn my torso and my right arm out to the side. So I'm going to hold this stretch for 10 seconds. Again, I'm wringing out my spine and my torso like a towel. After 10 seconds, come back up to the top and you would do the opposite leg. Here we will see how the front and back functional lines are used in sporting performance application during competitive swimming. Specifically, we will look at the butterfly stroke. The front functional line is unique as it stretches out during the wind-up phase, moves into a contraction during the pull. The back functional line is unique as it is opposite to the front functional line. While the front functional line is stretched, the back functional line is contracted. This synergistic relationship allows the entire torso along with the rest of the body to be utilized for full power and momentum throughout.